Hello, everyone. Hi. I see some waves, so I'm hoping that means the audio is working as well. For those of you guys that do have your camera on, just let us know via a thumbs up if you can hear us loud and clear. All right. Thank Awesome. you so much. So if you guys don't know, my name is Calista. My name is Stephanie. And we're going to be hosting today's thread talk. So today's topic is called lightweight threads. There are most favorite category of threads, yeah. I would say. In the past, some of you may have attended some of our older thread talks, mm -hmm. and we've definitely focused and honed in on maybe one specific thread line, like Invisafil or Deco Bob or um, Afina even, because we've done one on Afina, but we've never done more holistic um, thread talk that includes all three and mm -hmm. where people's preferences may lie. So we're here today to talk about um, where you can use these threads, options you have, um, and all sorts of different sewing applications for these guys. Exactly. So we did do like specific, like Stephanie said, Invisifil and like Deco Bob and those kind of talks before specifically. But it's actually been quite a while since we've done those talks, maybe like two years ago. And since then, we've had maybe like new people join us or maybe like it's a good time for a refresher and to just like be able to connect again with everyone on this topic is just always a good thing. Um, so for those of you that have listened to that, I hope you don't find it too repetitive. But <laughs> for those of you guys that are tuning in for the first time on this topic, it's a really exciting one to talk about. And I hope you learn lots today. Yeah, I agree. Um, to just talk a little bit about Wonderfill. Wonderfill is a Canadian thread company, and we have over 36 thread lines. So yeah, you heard that right. There's definitely a lot of threads that we cover in all sorts of different materials, mm -hmm. like polyester, cotton, wool, um, reflective thread. We got rayon thread, glow in the dark thread, and the, the list kind of goes on. And mm -hmm. Calista kind of mentioned earlier that lightweight threads is a topic that we really are passionate um, and we like to talk about. Mm -hmm. So how it it's going to work today, like usual, we're going to have a PowerPoint so we can show you like the highest quality photo we can show of these samples, especially when you're talking about lightweight threads. We really need to like zoom in to the pictures to show you really clearly like how it looks because it's very difficult to see if we just hold it up to the camera. So we're going to be using the PowerPoint a lot. And if you guys have any questions along the way, feel free to type them in the chat. We're going to keep an eye on everything. Um, and answer as many as we can along the way. Um, if there's some that are like maybe not relevant to the current topic. Or we're going to cover it later. Yeah, or we're going to cover it later. Like ho hopefully eventually we'll answer all the questions and we'll leave some time at the end to answer some questions. I know you guys actually sent a bunch of question questions in already as well. So we will be answering some of those throughout the talk and again at the end of the, the lecture too. So Without further ado, we will kind of get into things. So I think the first thing to do is to bring up our handy dandy thread weight chart that we love to show yeah. so often. So we'll start there just so we know how thread weight works. What are we talking about when we talk about lightweight threads? So back to this chart. We have threads here listed from eight weight to a hundred weight. And we're not gonna talk about group one because as you can tell, even just based off how well you see those strands of thread, you can already tell that the smaller the number, the heavier the thread. So everything that we put in the category one group is more your heavier weight threads. And group two, your 40 and 50 weight are more like your utility weight thread, mm -hmm. threads that you're very comfortable using probably that you use often. They're great for almost everything that you need it to do. But when you use threads outside these groups, they're going to be able to give you more dramatic effects, whether you wanted to show more or hide more, that's what going outside of like that group two will really do for you. It can really help like enhance specific things that you wanted to do. So like what Calista 
said, 40 and 50 weight are very utilitarian. They fit almost most uses, but is it excellent or like the ideal thread to use? Maybe not always. Sometimes you don't want to see the thread or maybe sometimes you do want to see the thread a little bit more. So that's what brings us to group three. Mm -hmm. So you can see here we have threads li listed from 60 weight to 100 weight. So the higher the number, the finer the thread. So this is the group of threads that we're going to be talking about today. 60 weights, 80 weights, 100 weights. I think even compared to like five years ago, more, more and more of you have probably been hearing about using lighter weight threads and how it more and more quilters and sewers are using these because they offer a different result when you're doing different projects and they're actually going to be... Um, useful in different ways compared to like just a 40 or 50 weight thread. Yeah. And, and in addition to that too, like um, typically when you're moving up in weight as well to these finer weight threads, they're also not overly finicky. So it makes it quite user friendly when people are wanting to achieve those results. Your skill level doesn't have to mm -hmm. improve like drastically. You can just use different tools in your toolkit to achieve those results. So let's go to the next slide. And here we have every thread weight that we kind of just showed on the previous page stitched out for you. And we purposely used like contrasting colors to the white so you could see the strand of thread a little bit more. If we actually used um, a neutral color, you would actually find that that 60, 80, and 100 weight thread really blend in a lot more. So if we look at the 40, 50 weight thread, you can see them pretty clearly. But once we start getting smaller and smaller, the thread takes up less real estate, the thread gets a little soft, like the color is softer, even though it looks like a stark color. If you see the colors tied onto the bottom of this sample, you see it's actually like an orange and a pink. And you can't tell against the white. It's those colors, but it doesn't even look like super, super saturated. Not so in your face. And this is actually against like a white background as well. So it's like the most contrasted you can get with like a colored thread. So we're going to look at some samples like later on where we purposely try to blend it where mm -hmm. you don't see it as much. But this is just to like stitch it out and show you kind of just for scale, like how everything looks against yeah. each other. You can even refer to the little bundles of thread at the bottom of the picture to get an idea of how those thin threads look like tied up in the little bundle compared to those heavier ones on the right hand side. Yeah. And just to show you like a little bit of a contrast here. This is your 40 and 50 weight thread. This is a 50 weight, 100% um, Egyptian cotton thread here. There's about 1100 yards or 1000 meters on this spool. And this is deco bob. So this is 80 weight thread. And there's actually about 2000 meters or 2200 yards approximately on this spool. So there's double the yardage on almost the same exact spool. So that's how much yep. space your thread takes up. So if you think about where the thread's going to lie in your seams or all that kind of stuff, the thread is taking up room and there's going to be places where you want to reduce that. And we'll show you that in a little bit. And even more dramatically, this is Invisifil. So there's mm -hmm. actually 2,500 meters or almost 2,800 yards on this spool. So this one holds about 500 meters or about 700-ish Mm -hmm. yards more thread on the same size cone in yeah. everything. The amount of yardage you see on here is actually closer to a long arm cone just because of the amount of thread or just because of the weight of the thread um, on this spool. It's mm -hmm. just because it's so fine, it can actually hold a lot more thread on this little guy. So you can imagine how that would look in your quilt. Exactly. So just this is a visual for you to think about how much space thread can take up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go back to that PowerPoint there. So the other thing that we want to talk about is on a quilt, like you can see here, we have 100 weight, we have 40 weight, and we have 12 weight. And again, we're just stitching these out so you can get an idea of how the thread's going to look. On the top part of this sample, we have 
a pink fabric and matching and pink. matching shade of pink thread. On the bottom, we have a purple fabric with a contrasting color with a yellow thread on that purple. And as you can see, if we're looking at the 40 weight in the middle, that's what a lot of people quilt with 40, 50 weight thread. It looks perfectly fine when you have like a matching color. You can definitely still see like the lines of quilting pretty prominently. And when you look on the purple side, that yellow will stand out. You're going to see all the stitches there. If you wanted to pop even more, you you can see that with using that heavier weight 12 weight thread. But what's fascinating is when you're on that Invisifil side, using a lightweight thread like Invisifil, when you stitch even over top of that pattern, it doesn't like break up the crosses. And that pink thread almost just looks like a shadow of a line there. Like you barely even see the thread at all. Yeah. And we have quite a few samples showing up to show how Invisifil works on more heavily patterned fabric. Um, because there's, you know, um, when you're buying panels or you want a fabric to look a certain way, you don't want the lines to run over it and cut it up. You can explore using those finer weight threads. And although it's a little bit challenging to see, the 100 weight Invisifil is actually a neon yellow. Like it's a bright, bright, bright yellow, but um, it's actually a really huge difference even from the 40 weight. It just blends in um, a lot more. So that helps take away the question of what thread color should I choose when I'm doing quilting and stuff like that. So when we're talking about lightweight threads, a lot of the one, or not a lot, every single one that we're talking about is actually a two ply. Mm -hmm. So the 60 weight Afina that we have as a two ply, the 80 weight Deco Bob we have as a two ply and the 100 weight Invisifil we have as a two ply as well. And there's actually a reason for that. When you look at the cross section of a two ply thread versus a three ply thread, when we're talking about plies, that's like how many strands yeah, of the thread that we twist together. So when we look at the cross section of like a two ply versus a three ply, no matter which way you turn it, the three ply is going to be a little bit more round and the two ply is going to be a little bit more flat. And where this makes a difference is when you have it stitched on your fabric or you, you, you've you stitched with this thread because the three ply, because of its round shape, is going to sit a little bit more on top of your fabric. So that thread might look a little bit more dimensional. You might see it a little bit more. And so that's why actually most of our heavyweight threads are at least a three ply because we want it to be rounder. We want it to show more. Whereas with the lightweight threads, you're using these because you don't want to see the stitching, you want right? It to blend more. You want it to blend more, right? If you think about it, if you use a thick thread, you would never use it hoping that it would blend. You're using it because you want it to show. And that's the same logic with the lightweight threads, right? You're using the lightweight thread because you don't want it to show up on your quilt or on whatever you're doing. You're using it because you want it to hide a little bit more. And so that's why we use two ply because it sits a little bit more in the fabric. It's going to like sink in a little bit more and blend and hide. That's why these thinner threads are also really popular for techniques like trapunto, or if you want to really create um, a textured effect on your quilt without it being too thready. You're just basically using mm -hmm. um, that negative space in your quilt to show the design without it being too heavy on the thread side. Mm -hmm. And you can choose blendy colors for your heavier threads. But like Calista said, just knowing that it sits more on top, and that's what's adding to the texture of your quilt as opposed to kind of sinking more into your quilt. Yeah. So we'll talk about um, the bobbin in a little bit. I saw that question. And I, I want to answer this right now because I think this is a great question. Amy asked, how strong is Invisifil? If it's compared to silk, how would it compare? Um, so in Invisifil here is that 100 weight thread that we're talking about. And in general, whether we're talking about like Invisifil, Deco Bob, or the Afina thread, strength is always a question we get when we talk about lightweight threads because you think because it's finer, it's not going to hold up as strong. And whenever we show people a spool or a strand of the thread, they always try to, you know, like snap break it, it or yeah. snap it in their hand right away. Like that's the first instinct. But just know, first of all, when you test thread strength like this, your thread 
is not going to break like that in your machine and it's not going to have to endure that type of breakage. But with these lighter weight threads, they are all, um, with the Deco Bob and the Invisafil specifically, they are made with a material called cottonized polyester. So that's 100% polyester. But the reason why we call it cottonized polyester, and we put that cotton term in there, is because, is because we've treated the thread and manufactured the thread such that it's not going to shrink, it's not going to stretch, it's not reactive to heat so you can like iron it dry it it won't like pucker your seams it's not like that polyester or stretchy thread or bad quality polyester that you're probably thinking about that people tell you not to like piece or sew with this is made for quilters in mind so we put it through all these processes so it behaves more like a cotton but is made with a polyester and so you might wonder if you're gonna make it like a polyester why wouldn't you just make 80 weight cotton or 100 mm -hmm. weight cotton? Yeah, so that goes into understanding how cotton threads are made. So with all our cotton threads, including the 60 weight Afina, our 50 weights and our 12 weights, and even our pearl cotton threads, if you guys like doing hand embroidery with like Eleganza, all our cottons undergo a process called double gassing. And that's one way to treat the lint and stuff like that. But when we go another level deeper in terms of like what long staple fibers are, what short staple fibers are, that's when it really comes that's when we really understand why we don't actually go past a 60 weight in terms of thread weight. So for cotton, for cotton, for yeah. cotton. So a long staple fiber is actually only about an inch and a half. It's mm -hmm. not very long. So you can imagine when we're put, when you're manufacturing con thread or when you're treating it, the way that it's made is it's spun together. All these little fibers. It's all twisted together. And that's why the longer the fiber, the less length there is, but also the stronger it is. Mm -hmm. So um, strength equals length when you think about cotton fibers. But once you reach a certain point, and if you imagine how cotton is made, when it's already reaching that like 60 weight, and then you go beyond 60 weight to these 80 weight, 100 weight threads, it becomes so fine that you actually... You don't have enough fibers to yeah. keep the integrity of the thread together. Because, right, the more you have, if you just imagine it in real life, like you have all these like little bits of string mm -hmm. that you have to like twist up, the, le the less you have twisting together, the less the strong, strong that's going to be. So with the cotton thread, we you'll never see 100 weight just because it's going to disintegrate there's not going to be enough fibers mm -hmm. to give it the strength it needs to like hold up in your sewing and so that's why you have to look to other materials like um polyester to fill that void so it gives it the strength but it allows it to be fine and to compare it to silk so silk thread is a hundred weight as well so invisifil is the same exact weight as silk and we have tons of people that are converts actually from using silk to Invisafil. One benefit right off the bat is price point. Invisafil is more affordable than silk. Um, the other thing is Invisafil is actually very strong. And I love we got a comment. Someone said that Invisafil and Decobal were work workhorse threads. <laughs> they are. are dainty. Yeah, that is absolutely true. So whether we have um, Invisafil or Deco Bob, those super lightweight threads, the 80 and the 100, we put them in the long arm, we put the embroidery machine and the serger. We use it on every type of sewing machine possible. And they're more than strong enough to handle like whatever project, whether that's by hand or machine or machine. Yeah. And I will add as well that whenever you're sewing, I mean, aside from hand stitching, your seam is made of more than just one strand of Invisafil or one strand of Deco Bob. You have your top thread and your bottom thread holding together so another part that plays into mm -hmm. strength of thread is your stitch length too mm -hmm. so for example when you're using a 50 weight thread i think the default stitch length is like 2.2 yeah, something, something like that something around that when you're going down in your or when you're going up in your thread weight so that means you're using a finer thread you can actually decrease your stitch length because and like still get a flatter seam yeah and still get a flatter seam because like we said this has oh, let me grab a deco bob this has double the amount of thread as this guy so you can actually really reduce your stitch length without adding extra bulk and by doing the extra stitches per inch you actually get a stronger seam mm -hmm. so um 
you can imagine Clista likes to use this analogy of like, if you imagine a plank that you're hammering once on one end and once on the other end, it's actually a lot looser. It's a lot easier to pull off and it's a little, and it's less strong in that way. But when you're short, reducing your stitch length and you're nailing that plank down in more spots, it actually becomes much stronger and harder to pull that plank off. Yeah. So you actually end up, if you ever piece with these threads, like with a stronger seam, because you're able to put more stitches in it, but still get a flatter seam than using like maybe a 40 or 50 weight thread. So we're going to see some examples of that um, now. So we'll go back to the PowerPoint here. And so exactly, the next topic is piecing. I saw there was a question about applique and it'll be answered yes. very shortly <laughs> within this segment as well. And so this is a foundation paper pieced um, sample that we have here using the 80 weight deco bob. And we did get a question about which bobbin to put, uh, which weight of thread to put in the bobbin when you use these threads on top. And we do use the 80 weight in the bobbin for all our samples. So whether it's this thread talk you're joining or another thread talk that you join with us, we're always using that 80 weight in the bobbin. It's just a really reliable bobbin thread. It's nice and fine. There's no reason for you to add more bulk than you need to. So where you can reduce it, I would. So using a lighter weight bobbin thread, one, it's going to last longer in your bobbin. You can get a lot more yardage out of it compared to the um, maybe using like a 50 weight as well. If you're piecing, it's going to reduce your seam bulk. If you're quilting, it also reduces the bulk there. There reduces the bulk there also and makes your quilt a bit softer and less stiff. Yeah, it can improve the drapeability of your piecing so it makes it softer as well as we can't forget embroidery. So when you already have like a dense design in the front, you don't necessarily want that dense the dense amount of um, thread in the back as well. So it also helps keep your embroidery nice and soft mm -hmm. as well and flexible. Yeah. So in this example, like I said, we did a F it's an FPP pattern and we really reduced the stitch length down and you can see the seams don't look bulky at all. All the points are really sharp and like super crispy. Um, and the, the paper is actually still in the sample. So this is ironed and you can see it a little bit there. And with FPP mm -hmm. especially, when you combine kind of what we just talked about, deco bob being lightweight, reducing that stitch length. So you get really accurate corners and piecing with the reduced uh, stitch length and extra added bonus benefit is that your paper is basically perforated so you yeah. can actually just rip it off a lot easier than something with like a larger stitch length where you really have to be careful not to tug at your your seam too much exactly so this is another example side by side when we used a 50 weight top and bottom to piece and then we used an 80 weight top and bottom to piece and you can really see the seam bulk difference and the fabric is the same. Everything is the same about these two samples, except the thread. The ways we ironed it, everything, the way all the seams lay, it's all the same. But all we changed was how that, or sorry, it, is the thread that we sewed with top and bottom from a 50 weight to a 80 weight. You can see how crisp those lines look. The points are really sharp. Everything just lays really, really flat as well. And that's just a closer up image of it. And you can really tell. And the other great thing is, and here's another example of like a progression of us using more and more lightweight threads, is when you're stitching with a 50 weight, I know a lot of people care a lot about matching the exact thread to the fabric color and making sure, you know, it like blends in case when you like open it up that you don't see like the little threads that are in the seams. But when you use a lighter weight thread, it also takes care of that concern because you have a tighter seam, so you're less likely to see the thread. And because the thread is lighter weight, you aren't as likely to see even like the color specifically of that thread, even if it does show a little bit. So in general, I just, no matter what color I'm piecing with, I, I just piece with like a really neutral color all the time and mm -hmm. it's never a concern. 
And so I think many of you are probably familiar with Decobob and Invisifil, and maybe a little bit less with Afina. So how Afina actually started was it came on these smaller spools, and it was more intended for handwork. People liked using this lightweight cotton thread to do their applique, especially. Mm -hmm. And so over time, we started getting a lot of requests about having Afina in these larger spools for piecing because people were putting it in their machine, but the small spools weren't enough thread. And so when we were testing it around and playing with it, we were we don't know why we didn't make a larger spool because it actually pieced fantastically, especially if you have a preference to cotton over polyester. The 60 weight Afina is it performs really beautifully as well, especially when you're doing things like um, precision piecing, curved piecing and stuff like that. And here's just a zoomed out image there. Um, and then another image of piecing with Afina. So again, dropping the stitch length, you get really tight seams. You don't even see what thread mm -hmm. color you're using there. And everything just looks really crisp as well. Mm -hmm. So like Stephanie said, when you drop your stitch length, you can precision piece. And that's really great when you have a lot of curves in your pieces. And if you think about it, your curves are just kind of like little straight lines. So the smaller you can make those segments of straight lines, the rounder your curves can be. So you're going to get smoother curves and it the thread also doesn't eat into your seam allowance as much. And if you have a lot of pieces that like come together to a point and you always get those like really bulky parts and it's really hard to match everything together, mm -hmm. using a lightweight thread will tackle some of those problems and make it a lot easier and make everything like sit better, match better, and just give you that precision that you want and need yeah the the thread will take up less of your seam allowance which is what impacts the accuracy of your your piecing mm -hmm. and someone just asked if we're using deco bob with afina and the bobbin and yes we are so in terms of like what stitch length we are dropping these down to i would say anything less than two for sure like I sometimes use maybe like 1.8 to 1.5. I don't know if you guys know um, Varushka from Pride and Joy Qu Quilting. I think she told me she uses 1.2 oh with Deco goodness. Bob, which is like really, really tiny yeah. um, sometimes for some of her pieces. But I generally stick with something between like 1.5 and 1.8. But you'll really be able to tell like how much flatter your seams are, even at that crazy small stitch length. And <laughs> I do make mistakes when I sew and it's not difficult to take it out even at that small stitch length. It's not too bad. Yeah, I think we've all heard measure twice, cut once. I think this is check your pattern twice and piece once so you don't have to rip out. Yeah, we saw, the, we saw the naughty. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you don't have to rip out that tiny seam. Okay, so back to this. I think we have a curved piecing image next here. So again, this is just a zoomed out image, but this was entirely pieced with Afina. So like what Calista said, when you're shortening that stitch length, you actually can achieve a much nicer round shape without some of those like jaggedy edges that can sometimes happen when your stitch length is a little bit larger. And we have a graphic here mm. that shows what we're meaning. So those are like the little the dotted line is representative of your stitch length. And when you shorten it, you just get that smoother curve as mm -hmm. opposed to one that might be slightly more jaggedy. Exactly. And then again, also, if you have some patterns that have like really, really tiny pieces that would be almost impossible if you replicated this with like a 50 weight thread, mm -hmm. there's another moment for lightweight threads to shine so like really small stuff if your pieces are generally larger i think sticking with like the 60 weight afina like stephanie said is like an awesome choice it's gonna give you those flat seams you don't have to drop your stitch length down as small but when you really want precision i think deco bob is the way to go or if you do a lot of fpp i definitely recommend deco bob mm -hmm. as the number one choice for that and again, just some more satisfying things because <laughs> nothing like yeah, nothing satis is more satisfying when all those points come together. Yeah, and then you iron it and you get like a super flat seam. That's so satisfying. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so the next thing is English paper piecing. So English paper piecing is another great time to use lightweight threads because 
you're doing your stitching by hand and you don't want to actually see the stitches between each piece, each EPP block on there. Yeah. And I would say just the technique of doing EPP is just a little bit more conducive to like thread showing from the front mm -hmm. because of that whip stitch. And so when you have all these like contrasting colors, especially like between the, the, dark purple to the light blue and you're not sure what thread colors to use in those circumstances again when we're using that lightweight thread once you open it you won't be, even be able to see where your stitches are so that is also a major factor exactly that. so like the benefit is one you're gonna be you're gonna see your stitches a lot less two it's going to be a lot easier for you to match your color to your fabric because like Stephanie said, it's a lot more likely that you will see your stitches a little bit when you do EPP and when you do have a lot of colors going on and you're trying to find like the one that matches, it's sometimes difficult, especially when you have like darks and lights next to each other or like really opposite colors like orange and green and it's confusing like what you might choose as like the optimal color using just maybe like one or two colors invi of Invisifil rather than like having to match it on each mm -hmm. exact block is a, a huge benefit because you can really reduce how much thread you need and that thread is going to hide a lot better as well. And this is just another example too of English paper piecing where we purposely chose a super dark fabric with a light fabric. So um, do you use a dark color or a light color? But somewhere, so most of the time we're choosing somewhere in between and then you can achieve this really like clean look without the, your stitches revealing themselves. And the EPP lays really flat as well because again, the thread's not taking up a lot of room in your mm -hmm. seams. Everything just like sits next to each other a lot better than when you have just when you have like a bulkier thread in there plus the paper plus the paper exactly <laughs> and then the next thing is applique i think another huge advantage of using lightweight threads is it's a lot easier when you're doing certain types of applique so there's decorative applique and then there's applique like needle turn applique raw edge applique applique where you don't actually want to see the thread as much and that's what we're talking about here yeah and i i would say that in these next couple of samples we are showing applique with 100 weight but i would say that the thread you use for applique um, for these lightweight thread selections is highly based on like your preference mm. um, and your hand feel. Some people like the super thin, same weight as silk for applique, like Invisifil, but other people do like using that cotton thread. It has a little bit more grip um, to do their applique too. So um, although all of these are Invisifil, um, using just the properties of that lightweight thread in Afina and Deco Bob are also um, really common, really, really common alternatives. Mm -hmm. So let's take a closer look. So this is actually needle turn applique with Invisifil. So this is very zoomed in to one of those leaves that we just showed you. And I hope you can get the feeling from this photo, how flat that looks. Uh -huh. And you cannot see any stitches at all on this. Like the thread just totally disappears. Again, because the thread is really fine, you can add more stitches. So with like this leaf shape where there's like a bit of a curve to it as well, it looks really smooth. smooth. Yeah. And here's just a different angle to show you the side of the applique to really show how that like thread blends in to both the applique piece and also the background. You don't see those stitches coming forward at all. Mm -hmm. And this is um, the same sample just replicated um, that has some quilting on it, but this is also applique, hand applique um, turned over. So, And now let's look at machine applique. So this is the other leaf that's on there now. And I don't know if you guys can tell. We tried to zoom in as close as we could. Yeah, I see some people leaning in. <laughs> Take a good look. <laughs> but you can see maybe tiny little zigzags. So we didn't actually even use a blanket stitch here. We used a zigzag because we're really trying to show how well that thread hides. So again, with dropping the stitch length down, when you're doing applique, you can make really, really tiny little stitches for that machine applique. And 
it, it just disappeared. It just disappeared. It hides the thread even better. And it almost looks as good as the hand applique, I would say. So for those of you guys that like want to do applique and maybe aren't so good with doing it with, by hand, this is like a fantastic option because I feel like you can get near similar, res similar results as like doing it by hand. By hand, exactly. And here's another with the darker leaf and you can see the zigzag right there. But again, this is extremely <laughs> zoomed in image. Um, and just to show you, we have the bobbin thread in the back here so that you can kind of get a sense of the stitch length. Um, mm -hmm. We do adjust the stitch length and the width of the zigzag. So we're really trying to make it super tiny. And again, it is deco bob in our bobbin thread. Mm -hmm. So this is if you do want it to show yeah. 50 weight. So just as like a comparison, we wanted to show you decorative applique options just so um, some people want it to show. Sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. So this is 50 weight. And when you when we go to the next slide here, this is with 12 weight. So all of them, I think, look really nice. A lot of times it's just based mm -hmm. on your creative preferences and what you want to show or not. Exactly. But I think for applique, Invisifil is my number one choice. Mm -hmm. Like whether you do it by hand or machine, like nothing else. It's can, very satisfying. It can compare to how well that thread works for applique. Okay, and now we're going to show you the sample that we just um, made last week. Mm -hmm. So this is a piece that we pieced together with like a spectrum of colors. And then we actually stitched across the whole thing with a rainbow selection of Invisifil. We have neutralish colors on top that range from like black to white to tan to gray. Mm -hmm. and, and beige. beige nude colors and then on the bottom half the ones that aren't in the red Box. square we actually used a rainbow of colors and you can kind of tell on the white piece that we have like red and orange and yellow and green and blue there's a slight hue on the white that you can see there but this is the the point of this sample was mm -hmm. essentially just to show you it doesn't have to be an exact match every time when you're doing these um fine when you're choosing these fine threads for quilting, especially, I know um, when you don't want to disrupt the pattern or you're, you're you have like a ton of color changes in your quilt, um, you don't have to just do one section at a time. You can choose like these neutral colors or even these bright colors and it blends in actually really well. Exactly. Like you're obviously going to see it the most on the white and the purple or black because those are like very opposite colors and and the thread's going to be most contrasted against those but if you just actually look in the middle from like the pink to like the bluish section no matter where when we chose a neutral color or like a colored or a colored thread which included like i said the red yellow green blue purple, purple every color yeah. <laughs> it almost but blends in no matter what color we chose yes maybe some of them show a little bit more than others but in general they barely show mm -hmm. and if we replicated the same example with like a 50 weight thread it would be very apparent it's because we used a 100 weight here that like it's so subtle like you see the lines of quilting at the very mi minimum like but you barely see the color that's on there and that's mm -hmm again, the power of these lightweight threads. So so now we're into quilting. So yes, you can absolutely quilt with all these different lightweight threads as well. All right, next yeah. slide. Yes, so this slide is quite interesting. So what we see first and foremost are these heavier weights at the front, these circles that are kind of free motion, quilted onto this piece. Mm -hmm. But when we actually take a closer look here, this is a combination of using 12 weight spaghetti, that's our cotton thread, mm -hmm. and Invisifil in the back. So if you look at it kind of uh, more on the right side, you can see the pebbles, that's all quilted with Invisifil. So that's playing with different thread weights to add dimension to your quilt and layers to your quilt. And as like kind of a throw back to what we spoke about earlier of ply, um, you can see spaghetti does sit a lot more on top of the quilt, whereas Invisifil sinks a little bit 
more down into the fabric. And you also wouldn't be able to achieve as small and defined pebbles or circles with a heavier thread. So that would also impact what types of designs you're able to do. Exactly. So I'm just going to go back for a second because someone wanted to know what the colors we really used were. So on the top part where we have the red box around it. So those were all neutral colors. And so we used everything from like a black to a white, off-white, gray, tan, beige, beige charcoal, like those types of colors. Mm -hmm. And then on the bottom, it's going to be an order of rainbow, uh, like the rainbow color. So it's going to be like red, orange. orange, yellow, green, like maybe a teal and then a blue and then some purpley and, and fuchsia-y colors on the bottom. And so if you just kind of pay attention to where it starts and then you go across, you can kind of tell. If you get an even close enough color match, like, for example, the first line of stitching underneath that red box is with, like, that fuchsia-y red color. On that pink fuchsia fabric swatch, you can barely see the it thread. It disappears. It disappears. Yeah. Even across the orange, it's so slight. And and even the yellow and surprisingly on the blue, it it does show up a little bit, but it doesn't even look like super pink or anything. Like you can kind of just see the line of quilting there, but it doesn't draw your attention in. It it kind of fades. And once we get towards the end with like the purpley blues and there's like a little bit more of that red or warm color introduced, that that fuchsia red color almost disappears into like those last few swatches as as well so like when you have a, a um a quilt that has like a lot of different colors and you don't know what to use like even if you choose just like one color of invisible you can see one color really can go across like a lot of different hues like a lot of different totally not matching colors and hide really well yeah, the fabric choice was all really intentional to choose these really highly saturated colors. And the thread choice color was also very intentional to choose the brightest colors of that color <laughs> that we could find in Invisifil. So like, again, our neon yellow is making a comeback in this image as well as, as, well as those neon pinks and stuff that is available in Invisifil. Okay. Okay. So just going on to this next one, this is also another play on um, using different thread weights in a single quilt to kind of play with textures. So if we're looking at the outline of the rectangular box, that is a 12 weight thread. Um, and then when you look at the grid that's inside, that's actually 50 weight. So even comparing the 12 weight and 50 weight, there's actually quite a stark difference. Um, and then when you notice the texture in the background, you kind of see this like pinkish purplish hue, even though the fabric is um, dark gray. And that's because we did use Invisifil in that, I think we used it in purple or like this fuchsia color to kind of give it a really cool like shadow um, tinted pink effect. Mm -hmm. And so again, it doesn't always have to be like super blatant, but it can work into as a design element as part yeah. of your quilt. And here's the center of it where you can really see um, how tiny that is and the micro quilting that's kind of going around. And I believe the outside rim of the circle is also with that 12 weight. So, so it's side by side. You can see the difference. So for those of you guys that have used um, monofilament before, I would say Invisifil is going to be the better replacement for monofilament thread because monofilament is... Um, it still shows even when you stitch with it. It's like supposed to be a clear. It comes in like clear and smoke. But because it's actually the material of it is almost like plasticky, like mm -hmm. fishing line kind of material. It has like a very shiny finish to it. So when it's on your cotton fabric, it can actually still look shiny and like appear and not totally disappear whereas you can tell in all these samples with like the deco bob and invisifil and things like that it feels like it could be a cotton thread right it doesn't like shine it like blends in it's like the same it get offers the same type of like the way the light hits it 
is the same on the fabric as the thread and it doesn't like look shiny or anything and it's a lot easier to sew with as well so yeah because there it's cottonized there is no like shrinking or stretching mm -hmm. that comes along with that and another plus too is I think monofilament is around a 40 weight thread so that also means you need to use a larger needle which means that you're going to poke slightly larger holes in your quilt with a clear thread so that's also going to be more visible than using like a microtex needle or like a 7010 or 8012 needle that you would use for these finer weight threads. Mm -hmm. Oops, let me just go. So this is just a zoomed out kind of image of that quilt we were just showing right there. And let me just hop on over to this. So this one might be a little bit challenging to see because it's white on white, but if you can see where this like very detailed micro quilting is, that's all done with 100 weight thread. And the two ply and the thinness of the thread is what's able to still give that really textured effect despite it being so micro quilted. Even on the grid, you can see that there's still kind of that bubbly effect, that trapunto effect that we could do. Mm -hmm. So you can really do a really, really dense design. Mm -hmm and still get the detail and you get all that detail from using that 100 weight and then another thing that this it's is great one for, of our favorites yeah it's stitch in the ditch I think yeah a lot of people like to do stitch in the ditch and using 100 weight is a fantastic choice for that 80 or 100 weight they're pretty similar you might notice that the 100 is a little bit finer but I feel that some people just have like a preference for one or the other. So I would say, even though we say, oh, use Invisifil for this or use Deco Bob for this, there is a little bit of preference preference that you can choose which one you think works better for you. So with this example, we have, again, many different colors. We have some bright colors, we have some more neutral colors, and they're not quite in the same family, which can often happen. And so we have 50 weight on the one side. And of course, naturally, at some point, you might come out of the ditch. And that just happens. <laughs> we got to accept it. It's not easy to stay in there all the time. And then so on the other sample, again, we recreated the same thing. In both cases, we use like a peachy colored thread because it feels like the most neutral. And we purposely came out of the ditch both times. And we came out on the or darker orange fabric because you would see that contrast the most as you can see very obviously with the 50 weight but in the 100 weight example when we came out of the ditch you can actually barely see that thread at all so even when you do come out of the ditch you don't see your thread as much and because the thread is lighter weight it's actually easier to stay in the ditch so you shouldn't have as many issues like staying in but like we say with these lighter weight threads you can just kind of stitch in the neighborhood <laughs> and you'll be just fine because <laughs> it's it's so fine it's gonna hide really nicely yeah. and like you, you don't need to improve your accuracy just keep doing what you're doing exactly so that's why we sometimes say like it's not even about improving the skill it's just changing the thread and maybe using like a better tool and you'll actually notice that you get a better result so that's what you know opening your mind up to like using some of these lighter yeah. white threads can do. Yeah. It's just like expanding your toolbox. Exactly. Actually. And so this is again, one of um, my favorite samples is this rooster right here was thread painted with like a 40 weight, but how, how we chose to quilt it is kind of the star in my eyes. So we chose this fabric in the background that kind of looks like chicken wire. And we weren't sure how to quilt it without adding more noise to this pattern because if we chose black you would lose the effect of that chicken wire look and if you use white again it would ruin the effect so here's a zoomed in image of what we did is we actually just did a meandering um with 100 weight invisifil in the color like off-white or white and you can look in certain specific areas of this zoomed in image um I think Clist is going to try and circle it on the PowerPoint so you guys can see. You can see like the white maybe cross the black yeah. lines a little bit in here, these areas here and there. But you really have to point. We really have to point it out for you to see it. Like it's not the first thing you see. And this is, again, very zoomed in. And if we go back and and look at the image beforehand, you don't see those 
black lines being broken up at all by all that white thread quilted on there. So we get the texture of the quilting. The quilt is quilted without disrupting any of that at all. And so again, going back to the next slide, that's why we're able to kind of use mm -hmm. those lighter weights when you don't want to inter interrupt the fabric, especially if, if it is a little bit um, noisy. Exactly. Let's see. So we um, will have a slide on needle sizes at the end of the PowerPoint. So don't worry um, about me rattling it off the sizes earlier. We will have a slide dedicated to needle sizes and also tell you where you can find some more information too. Exactly. Okay. So moving on. So this is also a pretty patterned fabric in the background. You, There's a bunch of tiny little mm -hmm. white flowers and we've done a bit of a trapunto effect on mm -hmm. this quilt. So when I zoom in on this wall hanging, it's actually really densely quilted with Invisifil. And even with that much thread on it, all the flowers are still intact, are still whole. It doesn't look like there's too much thread on it or covering what you wanna show. All you see is the texture like you do here. And another fun thing too is we also did our applique with um, Invisifil on this quilt as well. So all these like round shapes are all done with um, needle turn applique using Invisifil. Mm -hmm. And then this is another example of when to quilt with a lightweight thread. This is when maybe the fabric isn't busy, but the pattern is the star, is the star, right? Like you've done your piecing and there's like a very clear image on there that you don't want to interrupt. And um, there's a lot of colors going on at the same time. That's another time you might want to think about using those lighter weight threads is that there's like a lot of color change and you might not want to change the thread color like five or 10 times in this quilt and you just want to use one thing for the entire quilt. This is a good example of like when to use Invisifil. So for this whole quilt, we only used one color all the way through. Like we didn't change the thread color one time. And from here, you see the texture of the quilting, but you don't see that thready look at all. You just see the lines of the quilting. It doesn't interrupt anything. And so it's a great choice for when you kind of want to achieve this type of effect. And this was all done on the long arm as well. So we ran this on the long arm. Like I said, Invisifil, Deco Bob, like all these can go in any type of sewing machine, whether it's like embroidery, long arm, serger, like they work amazingly for all of these. Yeah, and so all of this was quilted with, or all of this was pieced with Deco Bob and then quilted with Invisifil. Yeah. And actually this is Callista's quilt, I think the first or second quilt that she made. And this was um, a pattern by Violet Craft. So another one you might be familiar with is the Lion quilt. We've shown this quite a few times before, but it's still the same idea where you have these contrasting colors and the light gray, dark gray, you have light peach. So what color do you use? And I think in this one, we're also using that light gray. And we've like zoomed in super close to one of the pieces where you can see the gray thread up against that cream color, the red color, and that peachy color. And it almost kind of takes on the background of the fabric because it's like sunken into it. It's not really sitting on top of it anymore, which is why people have to walk up super, super close in order to see the color of the thread. But most people are not doing that when they're, you know, looking at your quilt. Yeah. So you'll be able to achieve that result of just highlighting the pattern design without making it too busy exactly and then this is again more background quilting to add texture not to take away so like we said using different weight uh, weights of thread creates like some more depth and dimension in your pieces so we're playing with different thread weights this is we're with the lightweight threads they always go more in the background so it just creates layers like those words pop out more but you still get some texture and some fun, fun patterns by quilting with the lightweight in the back. And again, another super detailed piece of um, quilting with micro quilting. Yeah, micro quilting. All of this is done with a hundred weight. And um, the thing that's like really amazing about this is this is just actually a white piece of fabric with Invisifil as the medium she used to kind of 
not really thread paint, um, but kind of yeah. using the different colors available to fill in those gaps and create the pattern that she wanted. So you can see how tiny mm -hmm. each of those little pebbles are. If you like go back, you can tell this being held up. It's only like really a small two or three feet wide quilt quilt and look how tiny all of that is and that's entirely free motion on the long arm mm -hmm. as well so you can do really really delicate really really tiny stuff and create really unique looks like this is not achievable with a 50 weight like you wouldn't it, those... it, it almost looked like embroidery at that point because of how much space that thread would take up and it would also be like more textured as well yeah, so all these pieces that kind of match, like this one too, they're done by um, a designer and her name is Terry Cherney and she does like amazing, amazing work. And so this was one of her award-winning quilts. And when we look super close again, this is also that really teeny tiny micro quilting that she used in different rainbow colors on white fabric. So again, like sometimes you want it to show and sometimes you don't want it to show. Sometimes you want that like hint or that tint of color. So I think this is like a really fun way to use these lightweight threads too, because it doesn't always have to hide, even though it's really great at that. And this is just another like comparison sample for you guys to look at. And we have 100 weight, 50 weight, and two 12 weight threads too. And you can see the really drastic difference when you're mm. quilting between them. And like I said, like sometimes you do want it to be seen and sometimes you don't. And it's just seeing what you want to do with it and expanding those options. All right. And now we're going to dive a little bit into embroidery. I know that maybe this wasn't even a topic that some of you guys considered when we're using thread weights like 80 weight or 100 weight, but actually these are really common when people are doing freestanding lace. And so although you can use like 40 weight or 50 weight to do freestanding lace, when you're getting this delicate look, um, you can really use these lighter, consider using these lighter ones. I think for those of you guys that have done freestanding lace before with a 40 weight top and bottom, you'll know that it's not like an actual like doily. Like it doesn't feel like actual lace. It feels quite stiff actually. Whereas with the 80 weight or the 100 weight, when you use these in the embroidery machine for your freestanding lace, these will actually drape. They will feel soft to the touch and delicate. And they'll actually feel delicate as well. I think you can tell just even based off the amount of detail that shows in this lace, like how much better it's going to be when you stitch with these ones. And then this is another example with the 100 weight. In, in the for embroidery doing a freestanding lace pattern. Yeah, and to answer a quick question, even for embroidery, for quilting, we always have deco bob in the bobbin. Even if Invisifil is at the top, we're using deco bob in the bobbin. Athena in the top, we're using deco bob in the bobbin. So um, we always like to say you don't have to be the same height to hold hands. The idea is the same. You don't need the exact same matching thread in order to use it with deco bob. Exactly. And then in terms of like choosing which embroidery patterns to stitch with the lighter weight threads, obviously because they're finer, they're not going to fill as much, right? So you need to think about what type of embroidery you want to choose. Like if there's a lot of like density and you want to make it like a lace, I think the lightweight threads are like the best choice. And often, often um, lace stuff is more detailed so later so right here we have actually the same pattern so on one we used 80 weight and in the other sample i'm going to show you in a minute we're going to use 50 weight thread so here we have you know like a nice silky undergarment. um undergarment undergarment here and we use deco bob right in the middle of the chest and the reason why we want to do that is one the fabric is really lightweight and it matches the weight of the fabric using a lighter weight thread. We don't want it to be stiff. We want it to like drape and feel as soft as like the rest of what this piece is. Whereas if we take the same design, you see here, 
pretty much the same design, or actually it is exactly it is the, the same. same design. We used a 50 weight and you can see how much more dense. dense this is. It fills more. You can almost feel how much stiffer this would be if you think about touching this design versus touching this design. And we didn't change anything about it actually. But on this example, we're doing it on denim, right? So if, Denim is like stiffer. It's like a heavier. thicker, heavier material. If we use that 80 weight on there, it would almost feel too dainty on the denim and it wouldn't actually quite match what we're maybe going to you like it doesn't like feel like it matches, right? Like it feels like like a really too light delicate. too yeah. delicate on like something like jeans. So there are instances where you might want to think like how it's going to be used or like what you're pairing it with exactly that you might want to use one thread over another. And so that's why I think like um if you're doing something that's just like on its own freestanding lace, I think 100 weight or 80 weight all the way. But then if you're applying some of this kind of stuff onto other things like garments, then you might want to consider what weight of fabric you're going to be sewing on so that it all feels like it's part of the same thing and mm -hmm. like it matches together. And I think this is a perfect example of that. And so another time that you might want to think about embroidery designs where lightweight threads will be maybe better than using like a for a standard 40 weight is if you're doing like monogramming or any lettering stuff where you want it to be like a little bit smaller or more crisp or more precise again we're thinking about all these types of things or these words kind of come up all the time when you think about the lighter weight threads if we look at the ladies um, in red right here. In the top right corner, we have the 40 weight um, Splendor, which is our 40 weight rayon thread, a very standard weight when you think about embroidery. But if we wanted to shrink the size of this embroidery, you see that we start losing actually details once you start getting towards like the smallest <clears throat> little lady there. Whereas if we did the same design and shrunk it Mm -hmm. small using the late 80 weight you still are able to retain all the detail you can see all the like lines in her dress especially where like her arm is in the back of her dress here but you start kind of like losing that here right it starts to become like really dense and like muddled looking but this still looks really crisp in the 80 weight and we're actually able to push that even more and do an even smaller design and same with the 100, you're going to get it even more crispy, even more delicate lines and push the designs further and get so, retain that detail in the even smaller size than when you were able to with the 40 weight. You would not be able to get that smallest size in that 40 weight. You would just like lose way too much detail and the design would become actually too yeah. dense and blobby. And so which one is the better choice? It just depends on your preference, right? Like here we even have 30 weight thread, mm -hmm. like even heavier. And you can see those ladies are really textured. And so it just depends on what you like, right? So if you want it to be bolder, like you could always go heavier. Or if you like how 40 weight looks, that's fine as well. But you're able to achieve different looks when you actually change the weight of the thread, right? You can see like all these different effects you get and how you're able to get smaller details and smaller looks at things and just going back to the lace on the first one we actually did all the text in um the like 80 the in the 80 weight thread here as well so that's 80 weight top and bottom so again monogramming monogramming lettering like you can actually do smaller lettering like this lettering has like cursive so you can actually see the little swirl in the o and it doesn't get lost into a blob and you can make your letter smaller and it'll be more crisp and defined right you can see if with like the 80 we even like went smaller in mm -hmm. one size and it's still very legible and very clean so th those are like the pros of using it for embroidery now, we've talked a lot about like generally using 80 weight in the bobbin, but now we're going to show you why you should actually use 80 weight all the time in the bobbin. Yeah. So as you can see here, we have side by side image of our pre-wound bobbin and also machine wound bobbin. I think 
almost everyone here has experienced winding a bobbin on their machine. And what you'll notice is actually a lot of the time, it doesn't wind evenly. So it might be a little bit thick in the middle or at the top and you have to use your hand or you have to wind it extra slow to try to regulate how even it is on your bobbin. And even then it's not perfect. And I know for some of our Bernina people out there, there's not not too many options on the market yet, um, but you do have to wind your own bobbin. But this is kind of a side-by-side -side to show how even evenness in your bobbin can impact your sewing. And part of that reason too is the perfect tension that's on a pre-wound bobbin. So you can imagine the thread that's coming off your spool is factory wound and that already has even tension. Um, but when you're putting it in your machine, the other half of that seam, which is your bobbin, if it's also factory wound, you have two things that are both as even as they can be feeding into each other and doing the sewing. When you have a bobbin that's like slightly less even, it can result in like sometimes skip stitches or uneven tension and things like that. So even like with winding deco bob ourselves. So in this sample, we're using deco bob on both sides of this uh, teardrop shape. The one on the right is using the pre-wound and the one on the left is uh, self-wound by us. And you can actually see, there's actually quite a large difference in the density, how regular each stitch looks. Um, just by looking at this picture here, there's almost like a line down the middle that shows you what each side is. And that's just simply due to um, it being a factory wound bobbin. Exactly. So we don't recommend pre-wounds just because it's convenient. Uh -huh. Yes, it is convenient. And that's a huge pro. But we love pre-wounds because they actually deliver like a better result. As you can see here, even with like deco bob on both sides, you can actually see how much better it fills on the right side and like how much like more evenly it like looks and everything about it is actually just like a little bit of a better quality. Yeah. And I, I will add like a little disclaimer here too, that like not all pre-wound bobbins are made the same. Yeah. You might've seen like paper list bobbins or paper cardboard sided bobbins. And of course, like uh, metal bobbins and plastic bobbins. Um, but pre-wounds usually only come on either plastic or paper, paper or side list. Yeah. So why? What's the difference? What's the difference? So the difference is simply how the bobbin is wound and how it's assembled. So when you think about a plastic bobbin. The shell of it is basically you have the edges and then the middle and we wind the thread around that until it's full. When we're looking at these sideless or paper bobbins, there's a different method of how that thread goes on. Exactly. So if you think about a sideless bobbin, it's just got the core in the middle and the thread that's on the outside. I think maybe you guys have seen them before, so you know what I'm talking about. But Sideless bobbins, think about why the thread does not fall off. How does that make sense, right? If you have nothing containing the thread together and you only have the core of it, like there's actually quite a bit of adhesive that keeps the thread from falling off when you have a sideless bobbin. And the only difference when you have a paper bobbin is after the sideless bobbin is put together, then you have more adhesive to put the paper sides on so you can print maybe like the brand or the color of the thread on there. So that's why we don't love paper bobbins because they can also kind of collapse sometimes when, when they're in your bobbin case, when you're sewing. And we just find that plastic bobbins can deliver the best results and you can reuse our, our bobbins or recycle them mm -hmm. afterwards as well. And another issue too is, not only does the adhesive just like hold it together, but that can actually end up scraping off into your machine. Mm -hmm. So if you have used these bobbins before, maybe you've noticed like some white dust or some something that's not quite lint that's in your machine. Mm -hmm. That could be a result of like some wax or some coating that's scraping off into your machine. So for those of you guys that are interested in using a pre-wound bobbin and you don't know what bobbin size, your machine takes, you can actually click on the link that um, 
our coworker Bethany just shared into the chat. That takes you to our bobbin guide where you can look up what size machine or what size bobbin your machine takes. And there's actually a chart on there as well. If your machine is not listed, you can print it out and measure your bobbin against it to tell what size it takes. Currently, there is no um, size for some machines that have like their own custom bobbin size mainly like the Bernina <laughs> yet <laughs> yet <laughs> hopefully those will come one day um but for now if you do have a custom bobbin size you will have to just wind your thread on there as well but not to worry because deco bob is still a better choice in your bobbin whether you have it pre-wound or not so in this next example here we used a white bobbin thread a 50 weight in the top part of this stitch out and then in the bottom part, we used an 80 weight deco bob, also in white. And you can see here, this is like got a lot of satin stitches on it. So it's really easy for like pokies to show. You can really see that like when you choose a lighter weight bobbin thread, it like hides better. You don't see the pokies as much. So the embroidery actually looks like fuller and like more rich as well compared to like when you use like that 50 weight bobbin thread and it like doesn't actually define it the... makes the embroidery look like not how it's supposed to yeah <laughs> it looks a lot better with that 80 weight in there so let's go to the next picture again we have we're purposely using white because a lot of people like to use white and black embroidery thread but i like to use neutral colors so if you are choosing embroidery or sorry, bobbin thread colors, I recommend like more neutral because white and black are really easy to see if you ever get pokies. Whereas if you choose like more grays or off whites or like beiges, things like that, you actually don't see um, those pokies as much. But anyways, in this example, again, we're using 50 weight in the bobbin and 80 weight in the bobbin with white on both. And again, this is just another example where you don't really see that thread as much oh. be so pokey yeah be like be so prominent i mean yeah yeah and then i think this is the slide that some of you have been waiting for and that is the hand and machine needle size guide so this is kind of a general overview to cover the 60 weight the 80 weight and the 100 weight um threads so sometimes you do need to move up slightly in size it doesn't always have to be like a 70 10 even if you're using invisifil so for example if you're machine quilting maybe you just want to increase that needle size a tiny little bit because you are moving the thread in different directions as well as when you're doing things like embroidery or going through layers or stabilizer you can also consider using a super non-stick needle as well because um it'll it just has that coating that makes it a little bit smoother every time it goes through your fabric and um, punctures like the stabilizer and stuff and uh, for us the super non-stick needle we like to use is by schmetz um, it's worked really well for us and they do offer it and an assortment of different sizes too so we have the long arm sizes and the handwork um, sizes here too. And just to differentiate what a Microtex needle is between a Microtex and a top stitch needle is simply um, the distance between the eye and the tip of the needle. It's a little bit longer and sharper in a Microtex needle um, compared to a top stitch needle if you zoomed in like and the size of the eye. Yeah, and the size of the eye is slightly different as well. Yeah. So if you guys forget any of this information, you can actually find it all on wonderfill.ca. Under the products tab, we have um, the resources page and we have hints and tips for all of our um, threads. So that will include like what each thread is good for, what the needle sizes are for every single thread. So if you don't remember to like take a photo of this or like jot it down today, you can find it all there mm -hmm. as well. Okay, and then finally is serging. So like I said, you can use these threads for all the machines. <laughs> so that includes serging. So this is kind of similar to what we were talking about earlier with embroidery, where sometimes you might have like more delicate fabrics, like chiffon, organza, organza tool. tool, things like this. And you wanna match the thread with the weight of the fabric. So you don't get like really bulky, you know, like, 
yeah, finished edges and things like that. And as well, this is kind of related to what we said earlier too. When you have these smaller threads, you can drop the stitch length. You can like really reduce it. So you get like a much finer like Delicate. hem and it all looks really nice and it it all just balances well. Yeah. So when you even think about like a veil or where where you're using things like organs or how um edges are finished on certain garments where it's not like folded over and surged like with the overlock or whatnot. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's a rolled hem because that will give the most delicate look mm -hmm. um, on your piece. So this includes um, this shirt that we made here. I, we're, I'm just going to zoom in right there. So we did a rolled hem to finish the edges as opposed to actually folding it over and sewing it down again. This gives it a really thin clean edge without having to like double up layers and stuff like that. And then um, I think that's our last picture. That is our last picture <laughs> for surgery. <laughs> we somehow managed to talk about lightweight threads for an hour here, but we kind of want to answer some questions before we take off today. So We've covered everything from hand to machine sewing with these threads. And hopefully you guys feel inspired and excited to maybe try a different thread weight, or maybe you already knew about these threads and you were just like wondering what they could all do. And now you finally know. Yeah, one of my favorite things about this lightweight category is they're like, I would say the most versatile threads because when we're looking at heavyweight threads, the primary use is decorative or like yeah. decoration and stuff. Um, but when it comes to these lightweight threads, it can have- They're that, so functional. Yeah, they're so functional. They have that decorative element. Um, you can use it for piecing, for quilting, for embroidery. Applique. Applique surging. construction. Yeah. So um, it just has so many of these different uses. So I hope like today you felt inspired seeing some of the samples or any of the samples. And I know a few of you submitted some questions questions mm. um, beforehand. So we're just going to touch on a few um, and hopefully we answered the other ones in the talk today. Yeah. And then um, one question is, will this video be available online when we're done? So yes, we are. We did record this video today. So we're going to post it on YouTube after um, this session. Hopefully by the weekend we'll have it up. So you'll be able to rewatch it on there. And then the other question is, will you ladies be in Lancaster next week? Unfortunately, not specifically Stephanie <laughs> or I, but we um, we have some other shows to attend. But Wonderful will be at Lancaster. Yeah. So if you are going, still do check out the booth and um, say hi to our teammates over there. But um, if you didn't know, we are doing something with AQS. So Lancaster is part of the AQS Quilt Week shows, and we are doing a challenge series with AQS. Um, where you can buy your dream cabana kit and you decorate it however you want. So you fill in the blank. It's like a handwork challenge. You can also use machine as well. We've we've uh, sponsored this challenge. So it'll be wonderful merino wool with the pre-cut inside mm -hmm. and the wool applique thread. So all you have to do is just decorate it. But anyways, back to answering yes. a few of these questions. Yeah. We can always go into that a bit more later. Um, so one question we just got are, are these thread talks a regularly scheduled thing? Um, they're not super consistent in terms of like which day we do it on all the time, but we try to get on here as, as frequently as we can um, with our own like travel schedule with like the company and things like that. We love being on here and like chatting with everyone and really seeing how engaged everyone is like learning about threads. So we want to do more and more and like as many as we can. So please let us know like the topics that you guys are interested in. Like maybe we can do some more specific stuff or we can do shorter um, thread talks as well, depending on like what you guys might be interested in. Yeah. And I will say we, we're quite highly influenced <laughs> by the requests we received because we <laughs> try to answer everyone's questions. So if you do see prompts about ask, like answering certain questionnaires on Facebook or Instagram or things like that, it it's always super insightful for us to read what you guys want to know about, um, what you want us to troubleshoot or deep dive into. So we did receive some requests after today's thread talk and a bunch of people said deco bob so i'm so glad we were able to talk about that more in depth mm -hmm. 
I think in general, we've covered most of the related questions. Um, so, but if there's anything else um, that you guys want to ask, please do so within the next couple of minutes before we hop off. Um, we just had another question where is, where do we submit topics? So if you're following us on like Instagram or Facebook, or even if you just go to our contact page and like just write us like a quick little message, we're, we we get all of that info. We yeah. read all of it. So you can like tell us wherever you want and we'll find those messages <laughs> and know what topics you want us to talk about in the future. But I think Bethany just shared an email as well. Like we said, you can email, contact us there. We also have contact us forms or DMing us on social media. And if you guys are part of any guilds, we do do events with guilds as well. Currently, we are booked uh, until April of next year. But if any of you guys are interested in have hosting us for like a little thread talk, um, it can it doesn't have to be lightweight threads. It can be kind of what your guild specializes in or is curious about. You can also let us know in any like on the contact form Bethany provided. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not seeing like too many other questions right now um related to the topic <laughs> so i think that means that it's time for us to hop off but we really thank you guys for being such a great audience you guys saw you guys really taking notes and paying super close attention the whole time so we really appreciate your time and we really do hope that you guys learned something new here and we were able to offer something different that you maybe haven't thought about before and hopefully we'll see you at the next thread talk or maybe in person we will be in houston stephanie and i so maybe we'll see you at market or festival or something like that and yeah. If not, we'll see you guys online too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank All right. you for joining today. Okay, bye everyone. Have a great afternoon. Bye. bye.